Less time on Left Behind. I want to wave some cash in front of a guy named Bo Hansen. The guy at the airport? Yeah, I think he's mixed up with Hattie. Yeah, I'm sure that's what would we happen. We want to deal with Dr. ben Judah and the others peacefully. Oh, yeah, right. We believe you know their location, Mr. Um. Do not mention strokes. Strokes? Of course, not only the believers, the, the holier-than-thous can see these monstrous beasts. We must face the truth, Lehigh. The Carpathia's day is past. I'll just tell whoever I need to and you'll never find Hattie Durham. Now, you see, Bo, I had considered that. I'm out of here, man! Based on Assassins, the sixth book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 68 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Commander, come in. I Please will make this brief. Uh, the potentate has asked that the metal detectors destroyed in the airplane be replaced before His Excellency appears in public again. Yes, sir. Uh, how long will that take? Well, if I get on it today, we should have them delivered How by... long? Uh, they can be operational within ten days. Make it a week. Well, I can try, sir. Uh, the potentate uh, also asks about the trace on Ben Judah. We're working as fast as we can. This kind of thing takes time. For your sake, I hope you locate him soon. Yes, sir. I got something to do. Then can we talk? Yeah, I just need to make this call. Gotcha. Hello? Is this Trudy? Who's calling, please? Uh, this is Rayford Steele. You know my daughter Chloe. Mac McCollum is a friend. Yes, yes, Captain Steele. So good to hear from you. Uh, you must want Dwayne. That'd be great. Honey, it's Ray Steele, Chloe's father, the pilot. Mr. Steele. Yeah, Mr. Tuttle, or should I call you Dart? That was quite a story. We do what we have to do. <laughs> what can I do for you? I need a ride to France. Great, thanks, Dart. I'll see you then. Tea? You didn't think I'd notice? Notice what? What you did out there? Which was? I saw you, T. You were giving gas to Bo. So? You want to check my mark? Well, come on and do Look, it. I don't need to check your mark. I need to know what you thought you were doing. I asked to talk to you, Ray, remember? Yeah, so? I want to know the same thing. What do you think you were doing with Bo? T, I, I got him to give me the information about Hattie. I didn't aid or abet him. And like I did. Like you did. That's what you call it. What do you call it? You guys working together against me behind my back? What? Yeah. I'm in concert with a kid two sandwiches short of a picnic so I can turn the tables on my Christian brother. Well, that's what it looks like. What am I supposed to think? What you're supposed to think, Ray, is that Bo Hansen is not likely long for this world. He's going to die and go to hell just like his buddy Ernie did the other day. He's not our friend, but we don't treat him like dirt. We don't play him, lie to him, cheat him, Blackmail him. We're supposed to love him. Tell him about Christ. He, I, Bo's I, I, dumb as a stump. You didn't have to make him think his ship had come in, then sink it for him. He'd have given you what you wanted. Look, I'm not saying I have all the answers. I don't know how we could have got the information another way, but what you did sure didn't feel loving and Christian-like to me. I'd rather you bought the information. Let him be the bad guy. But you were just as bad as he was. Well, I, I said more than I'd planned. You play this one however you want. But from now on, just keep me out of it. Cameron, Cameron, my friend. How are you? Hello, Doctor. You are a sight for old, tired eyes. Yeah, so are you, my friend. What, what brings you to Israel? Well, you do. Really? Well, we're all worried about you, Doc. Ah, Tzion is worried he won't convert me before the horses trample me. 
it would be a terrible way to go. Well, then, since you can see the horses, you'll, you'll let me know when to hide, won't you? You don't believe any of this, do you? I want it to be true. What a story. An answer to this, this madness. Really from, from the cruelty. Uh, Cameron, I am closer than you think. Uh, Doc, that's what you said last time. My house staff, they're all believers now you know. Yaakov, his wife, her mother, Stefan, Jonas too. But, but we lost him. You heard? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. You see, these are the things I don't understand. If, if God cares about his, his children, like you say, is there not a better way? Why the judgments, the plagues, the death? There is a, a cruelty about it all that, that makes it very, very difficult to see love. Or, uh, Doc, or... God allowing seven years of obvious warnings could be construed as far more than we deserve. In any event, you should not worry about me, my friend. I confess I'm feeling my age, but I keep busy. How? Mm, projects. Projects? What, science? Uh... And, uh, and more. You know, I heard you spent a lot of time inside your workshop. Uh, who told you about that? Well, Yakov just mentioned something about it. What are you doing? Ah, uh, no smoke today. It will come again, though. I know it. In fact, Tion has some kind of predicted number of dead. Well, the horsemen will not leave us until a third of mankind is dead. Can you imagine? Yeah. Basically means only half the population since the disappearances will remain. Truly, truly. You're facing the end of civilization. Gee, I don't know what to say. You knew what to say to Bo. You played him like a... Please, you're, you're right. You seemed to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I did enjoy it. What is the matter with me? It's like I've lost my mind. At the house, I fly off the handle. Leah, the, the newcomer I told you about, she's brought out the worst in me. And... I can't put it on her. I've been awful. T, I don't understand myself anymore. If you ever understood yourself, you were way ahead of me, Ray. You gotta admit, you had a little stress in your life. Yeah, well, we all do, even Bo. You know, I've never seen Bo as anything but a scoundrel. Oh, he is a scoundrel, but he's also I a... know. That's what I'm saying. The day I met him, he was putting down believers, and I've had a thing about him ever since. I wanted to put him in his place, and I was glad for the chance to do it. Some saint. So what do I do now? Chase him down, start being Christ-like to him? I sooner think your best approach is to disappear from his life. He's going to suspect any radical change. I should at least apologize. Um, T, that, that was... I mean, to be honest with me, I mean... Not a lot of guys would care enough. I'd like to think you'd do the same for me. I hope we get to meet sometime before the glorious appearing. Same here, Doctor. Lately, I've contemplated getting out of here and going to the States, but I don't think it's time yet. You are in a strategic place, David. We are all grateful for your technical genius. Well, thank you very much. But we have a problem. Captain Steele is off on his mission to track down Hattie Durham. Well, I heard... We that... don't know what Carpathia knows. My fear after the report about the plane crash is that the global community will track Hattie down and kill her. Hmm. In the mind of the public, she is already dead. You're worried Rayford's walking into a trap. I may be a paranoid scholar who should stick to his work. Well, but... you've seen the Carpathia machine up close. Indeed. And... If there is any possibility you can relay information to Captain Steele before he walks blindly into danger, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, I've been monitoring computer and phone lines, even personal interaction at the highest levels, and I haven't heard her mentioned. I'm doubtful I'll find anything. But if you do, you will transmit it to Captain Steele. Oh, absolutely. I'll get on it right away. <sighs> May the Lord protect you, David. Oh, thank you, Rabbi. And to you, too. Okay. Now, let's see what we can find out. 
All right, Eddie. Where exactly are you? Close the blinds. What's going on? I don't want the night crew to see me. All right. Listen, Sion's right. Rayford's making a huge mistake. The GC have to have Hattie in custody. Or they've killed her. Something's wrong here. Rayford must have known that. Well, you'd think. What were they thinking stateside, just letting him go? And why wouldn't Ray have come to me for one last briefing? David, you still feel like you're clean, right? Meaning? You're in their computers, their offices, their plane, on their phones. Has anyone even begun to suspect you yet? Well... Computer installation slowdown should have raised a flag, but I, I didn't sense suspicion from Leon. Well, there's your answer then. Just ask them. What? Go straight to Leon. Tell him it's none of your business, but you've been noodling the plane crash news. Okay. You know, you've always admired his insight and wisdom and street smarts. You know the drill. Mm -hmm. Suggest maybe that plane crash wasn't all it appeared, and say you want his take on it. Well, Annie, my dear... You're a genius. So, all four of them? Sad, isn't it? Oldest boy goes off to college, gets religion. Doesn't seem to hurt him any, except he starts in on the other three, and before you know it, baby brother's going to church. That's okay. We figure it's just little brother, big brother hero worship, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then the middle boys get invited to some church deal they probably wouldn't have normally gone to, get asked to play on the church basketball team, go off for a week to some camp, and come back saved. <laughs> Man, I hated that word. They used it all the time. I got saved, he got saved, she got saved, you need to be saved. <laughs> I love those boys like everything, but... Dad, listen, look, it's all right with me. Just as long as you don't expect me to start going to church with you. I had my fill as a kid. Okay, but this is different. It's better than what you had when you Fine, were... Fine, you go on then, but leave me out of it. Would you just go with us once? What could it hurt? I'm telling you to back off. All right, then at least let Mom go. She said she was interested. S some of her friends go. We're not interested. Dad, the only reason I'm saying this is... is because I care. All right, enough! What you do with your life is up to you. Just leave me and your mother out of it. They kept hammering away, but I never caved. True almost did. Mm, I wish I had. You can guess the rest. We never went to church with them, and, and bang. All four of them are gone. So where do you think we went right after it happened? <laughs> I'm thinking church. Something like that happens. It lets the air out of your stubborn in a big hurry. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm a salesman. Outgoing, friendly, confident. Loud is the word you're looking for. <laughs> okay, True, all right. I'm this loud guy, but I'm different now. It's not about whether I'm going to make my quota or get my bonus. People got to know. This is no sales pitch. We're talking about eternity. He can get kind of wound up. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> I always wondered what I'd do if I met up with old Antichrist himself. And when I saw his number two boy the other day, my heart was a-pumping and all, and I wasn't going to let him get to me. The day I got saved, I decided I wasn't ever going to be ashamed of it. It was way too late for that. I'm going to see my boys again. I'm going to see them. I'm going to see... It's okay, Dwayne. We know. All right, but you must promise me you won't think me baddie as my house staff does. I... I know better than that, Doc. Here it is. Uh, okay. What am I missing? Missing? There, look! Doc, Doc, I'm seeing a polished strip of foil or, or metal. Call it a hobby that has become an obsession. I'm striving toward the sharpest edge ever fashioned by hand. Really? I admit my, my skill has outstripped my eyesight. With simple clamp-on angle setters, I'm filing blades so sharp. I can't see them with the naked eye. I must look at them under bright light with my magnifying glass. Here, here, take a look. Okay. Ah! Do not touch the edge. You would lose a finger before you, you feel it touch your skin. Whoa. This is thinner than any razor blade I've ever seen. Back away carefully, please. What's it made of? Ah, this is the interesting part. 
It is made of super hardened carbon steel. It's a, a little hybrid I worked up in the lab. So, okay, so how is it different from other steel? It appears flexible, but is actually rigid. It's that thin, but still rigid? Indeed. A conventional knife dulls with use, and usually, the sharper the edge, the quicker the deterioration. Right. Watch this. A snack for later, an apple. Notice, I am barely holding it. There's only slight pressure. When I place it on the edge of the blade... Whoa, cut right in half. Let me show you something else. Uh, something with, with less density. There, there, hand me that old rag. Okay. Now watch. I exert no pressure. I simply let it fall. Whoa. Whoa, that is amazing, Doctor. But... But why? Quite honestly, Kevin, I don't know. David, come in. Come in. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Uh, please, sit. No, thanks. I'll just be a minute. What is it you wanted to see me about? Well, I, I just had a thought, which, well, in the end, is it's really none of my business. Proceed. Well, the death of His Excellency's former personal assistant, sir, I... Yes? That was tragic, of course. Yes? Well, sir, it wasn't a secret that this woman, this Hattie Durham, mm -hmm. that uh, well, she was pregnant and perhaps less than pleased with the state of the relationship. The fact is, she was trying to extort money from us. Oh. His Excellency felt he owed her some recompense for the time they had uh, enjoyed together. A generous settlement was paid, not to keep her quiet, because she knew nothing that would threaten international security. Nevertheless, she sought more money. We denied her request, and it is fair to say that she was not happy. Well, thank you, sir. You've told me more than I'm entitled to know. Why would you inquire? Well, sir, the whole plane crash story... Oh, it, it, it's moved now, and I, I should probably just... David, please. I wish to hear your thoughts. Well, it just seemed the report of her death. It, it, it struck me as suspicious, sir. You, you pay me to analyze data, sir, and in this incident, no wreckage, no bodies, just enough to make it look like she died, almost. David, sit down. This time I insist. Your inductive reasoning is commendable. The truth is... Miss Durham's so-called fatal plane crash never happened. Really? I put our intelligence enforcement chief on it as soon as word of the crash came in. And the fact is, Miss Durham, her amateur pilot, and the plane were quickly traced. Uh. The pilot unwisely put up a fight when our people asked to interrogate Miss Durham. He is unfortunately no longer with us. You understand that for reasons of security and morale... Not all such incidents are covered in the press. Well, of course. Miss Durham is in our custody in a comfortable but secure facility in Brussels, charged with the false report of a death. She really is no threat to the global community, but we're hoping to lure her compatriots to her hiding place in France. She will be released once they have been dealt with. Her compatriots, sir? Former GC employees and Ben Judah sympathizers provided her asylum when her presence was required in New Babylon. Oh, so she's serving as bait. Precisely. And this trap, it, it was your idea. We work as a team here, David. Oh, but it it was, wasn't it? it? It's how you think. It's its the street smart, sir. That, that idea was yours. And I believe it may have been. And it worked, didn't it? It may yet. No one knows of the death of the pilot. We sent word to his brother, whom we know to have been an accomplice. We told him that his brother was in hiding and would not be heard from for several months. Brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! It was simple, really. 
Well, I, I won't take any more of your time, Commander. And may I say, it's good to know you and your people are on top of everything. Well, David, don't feel bad about a good hunch. And never hesitate to ask if something's not clear. We put a lot of confidence in a person at your level and with your scope of responsibilities. Well, say no more, sir. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> I can take control back now if you like. Good. I need to make a call. Let your daughter know what's going on? No, my contact in the Gulf. Albi's the chief controller at Al Basra. Mac introduced. Believer? No, he's Muslim. But he hates Carpathia as much as we do. You pay through the nose, but you can trust him. Hey, now. Now that there, that's what I call a phone. I bet you got whistles and bells I never even heard of. Sat phone? Yeah. I'll give you the nickel tour in a minute. Uh, hang on. Albi, I'll be I'll Rayford Steele, can you talk? Uh, from the east, at coordinates, your situation. I want to meet with you about a purchase. Uh, affirmative. Oh, hold, please. What's going on? Oh, He's got down, company yeah. in the tower. Hi. I'm alone now, Mr. Steele. I was very sorry to hear of your wife. Thank you. I've also been very worried about Mac. I've heard nothing from him for a while. Until he popped up a hero in Africa. Indeed. In his position, he doesn't need my services as much. So what is it I can do for you? I need a weapon. Concealable, but powerful. Very difficult. The potentate being a pacifist... Means you're the only reliable source. Very, very difficult. I hear the price going up, don't I? Uh, how concealable are we talking? You want one that will not be visible to a metal detector? That's possible. Made of wood and plastic. Can fire two rounds, three tops before it disintegrates. Limited range, of course. Well, this has to do the job from 30 yards. One shot. Ah, uh, Mr. Steele. In that case, I have access to just the weapon. It is roughly the size of your hand. Heavy, thus accurate. 48 caliber, high speed, soft tip, hollow point. And a handgun? The air displacement caused by the spinning of the bullet has been known to sever human tissues a few inches away. Interesting. All right. How many hundreds are we talking about? We are talking about thousands, my friend. I see. All right. You get the piece for me to demo. I'll call when I'm in the neighborhood. Very good, Captain. It will be a pleasure to do business again. I didn't really intend to listen in there, Cap, but uh, that sounds like quite a piece of hardware you ordered. You wanted to check out the phone? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, heavy sucker. Boy, that, that probably does everything but cook your breakfast, right? You want them scrambled or over easy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, True, did you hear that? Oh, she, she's asleep. Send and receive from anywhere, right? Yeah. But the best part is, it's secure. Uses four different channels a second, so it's untraceable, untappable. Lots of goodies. You keep it in your bag? Oh, yeah, thanks. Hey, uh, if I'm not being too nosy, can you tell me what you're going to use such a powerful handgun for? Uh, the GC may be weaponless by law, but we lost a pilot to gunfire. And almost every one of us has been shot at at least once. Hey, you'll get no argument from me. It sounds like it'd be pretty expensive to issue one of those babies to everybody. I'll run some tests on it first. Good idea. By the way, Rafe, that glow on the horizon over there? That would be what we in the aviation industry refer to as the sun. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I don't get out much, so that's helpful. Our ETA's 40 minutes. Customs at La Haver, or however you say that's pretty much by the book. You got the British visa stamp, right? Yep, got it. Did I ask you uh, who you are today and why I buried you across the channel from England? Thomas Agee. Import-export. And you are? Angus Hudson. At your service. Ah, and the wife's? Just barely two syllables. Maya. Terrific. Nice to meet you both. Yes, this is... Uh, doctor, this is David Hasid. David, it's good to hear... I've been trying Rayford's phone the last half hour. He's either talking or he has it shut off. Have you discovered something? Yes, it's a trap. Hattie's in custody. The GC are waiting. Oh, no. Someone has to contact that plane on an open frequency. If Rayford makes it to that apartment, they'll kill him. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Assassins by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick. Directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, 
The Dramatic Audio Series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.